We are on. Welcome, everybody. This is Northampton City Council. It is, what is it, November 7th, 2019, and these proceedings are being audio and video recorded. I'm Ryan O'Donnell. I'll be presiding tonight. And we'll go with public comment to start. And if you haven't signed up, that's okay. You can still talk. So the first person is Jeannie Mulvey. Please, Ms. Mulvey, and if you give your, well, the floor is yours, so take it away. more eight uh, roost and other businesses that are affected by we're having monthly parkers park in front of the store so our customers can't park there and um, we've been told that it might take three or four weeks and we're hoping that it can be speeded up because the holidays are coming and um, I have regular customers that will even tell me that if they can't get a space right in front of my store they just they won't stop they'll come a different day um, new customers that see our block and are interested and they can um, find parking you know, the spaces today we had four out of the six meters were taken by monthly parkers and the city would make more money if you guys had <laughs> two hour meters in front of the store too so I'm hoping that it can be pushed through kind of quickly so well, okay thank you what I wanted to say yeah no thank you I forgot to give my preamble that we don't go have a back and forth during this section of the city council. Uh -huh. So sometimes it takes people off guard. They come and they, they present something and then we are they're met with stony silence. But it sounds like you've been in, in touch with people in the city about yeah. it? Oh, good. Good, good, good. Yeah. So that's what you got to do. All right. But thank you for sharing that with the full council as well. Great. Thank you. Uh, so uh, any other public comment? Someone who hasn't signed up or would like to speak on any subject? Okay. All right. Well, hearing no other public comment, we'll start the council meeting. Oh yes. Um, if you if you do happen to need an assistant assistance assistant well assistive listening device. If you need, <laughs> <laughs> I think I need assistance. <laughs> but if you need uh, an ass an assisting. Uh, Assistant speaking device. Yeah. Good night. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> if you need a device to help you hear better, we have them. Uh, yeah, they're actually being shown off there uh, by our able our able NCTV friend, and so and you can get them back there if you need help. <laughs> okay. So don't hesitate to go and ask for that if you want. We have another something I need to say. Or? No. Okay. NCTV good. NCTV is called Nom now. Okay. So uh, any other public comment? Hearing none, we will convene and ask for a roll of the council. Please. <coughs> Here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Labarge. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Nash. Here. And Councilor O'Donnell. Here. And Councilor Shear. Here. Okay, we are convened and we will start uh, first with a public hearing. Uh, this is a public hearing notice that was published on October 24th, 2019 and October thir uh, 31st, 2019 from Master Law Chapter 40, Section 56. Uh, Northampton City Council is about to hold a public hearing um, to discuss the percentages of the local tax levy to be borne by each class of real and personal property within the City of Northampton for fiscal year 2020 uh, in accordance with Chapter 40, <coughs> Section 56, Mass General Laws. Uh, so I would ask for a motion to open the public hearing. The, on the, the public hearing, please. Thanks. Thank you. All those in favor of opening the hearing say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Uh, so we have two at least very knowledgeable people who can speak to this. I see Susan Wright, our Director of Finance, approaching. Uh, so Susan, if you, Ms. Wright, if you'd like to um, start your presentation, we'd, we'd so be Joan and I have happy a, to hear it. Uh, PowerPoint just to walk you through what we're um, actually doing tonight. So the first slide. Um, the Classification Act was passed in 1978 and it requires that we classify all of the property that is taxable into four categories, residential, commercial, industrial, and personal property. Okay, the next slide, the definitions of these are, are pretty self 
explanatory. Uh, personal property is the property that individuals, partnerships, associations, corporations use in the conduct of their business. The others are residential, commercial, <coughs> so those are pretty simple. Next slide. So what you're actually doing tonight is under ja Mass General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 56, it requires, and I'm just going to read some excerpts, that the City Council, together with the Mayor's approval, annually determine the percentages of the local tax levy to be borne by each class of property. So you're basically going to be allocating the, the tax levy, which is the amount that we're taxing in property tax, to the various categories. So it says the city council, together with the mayor's approval, shall first adopt a res residential factor. So what you have to decide is, of your residential properties, what is the percentage that they will pay? And then that basically falls down into the other categories. So first you determine <coughs> the residential factor. So it says that um, the board, the um, factor will be used by the board of assessors to determine the percentages of the le local tax levy that will be borne by each class. And it says, prior to adopting the percentages, the City Council shall conduct a public hearing on the question of the adoption. So that's what you're, this is what you're doing tonight. Next slide. The property values in Northampton, as you can see over the last 10 years, continue to rise. The orange bar is the residential levy, the light, the blue is the commercial, the red is the industrial, and the dark blue is personal property. And it rises in, in part because we're allowed under two and a half to increase taxes by two and a half percent each year. The next slide is this year is a little different for Northampton. This was a, what's called a revaluation year. Revaluation used to happen every three years, but with the Municipal Modernization Act, it is now every five years. Um, so this year, Joan has been through, um, for the last several months, a long involved process with the Department of Revenue. They come in, they look at all of the uh, schedules and the sales, and basically they, they do a very thorough check and then they certify that our values are within, has to be within 95% of each other. Yeah. Yep. So Joan has just been through that. We have been certified. Um, so our review has gone very smoothly. And um, so that is the first step this year and we won't have to do it again for five years. We turn, turn the page, uh, next slide. Um, the additional tax revenue that is generated by new construction is called new growth. And every year that is what we can add to the taxable property in, in the city. So the two things that allow our levy to increase are the 2.5% and the new growth. And the new growth is all of the new construction um, that occurred for this particular year between July 1st of 2018 and July 1st of 2019. So new growth is a very key factor for us. The next chart shows the last 10 years of new growth for the city of Northampton. We have done very well, um, particularly the last five or six years. You can see um, the orange is the residential new growth. The green is the commercial, industrial, and personal property new growth. So you can see in the early years of this chart, the new growth was more commercial, industrial, um, at some places and maybe 50%, um, but the last couple of years it's definitely shifted and the new growth is definitely more heavily residential. Turn to the next slide. So our tax revenue that we've gained, the additional capacity that we've gained in our levy limit has <coughs> increased um, for the last several years quite, quite enough, I mean quite well. Um, you can see in 2015, we were up around 900,000. In 2016, another 900,000. 2017, we dropped to, to 730,000. The last two years, 18 and 19, we were up in the 900,000s, and we hit a milestone this year in 2020. New growth, which was certified today, actually, um, is 1,063,000. So new growth is very significant portion of our budget for us. It's also something that's very cyclical because if you look at the first year in this chart in 2011, new growth was 420,000. 
So this is very dependent on the economy. Um, so we have to be very careful when we budget for this um, because we don't want to overestimate this at all. So the next slide I'm going to ask Joan just to talk about, um, kind of give you a sense of why we have a million dollars in new growth. What were the projects? Okay. We have the new um, housing on Pleasant Street, the 155 Pleasant Street, which has 70 apartments, and the 256 Pleasant Street across, the, across from the other one with 55 new units. So we were able to pick up that new growth. At Wood Drive, we had the new medical building, which has a partial value, but we were able to pick up four million on that. The 95 Barrett Street apartments, um, that is um, Sunwood built those on Barrett Street. They're very nice. Five to nine Pomeroy Terrace, um, where the old <coughs> motel, Shaw's Motel used to be, and around the corner, there's 12 new units there. Village Hill had three new units and 55 Damon, Damon Road. There's a um, new Dunkin' Donuts and some other things where the Jeep place used to be. So we have a large amount of new growth, which has helped us, and we were able to hit a million dollars in new growth, and I had been hoping for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, a goal that Joan had. All right, the next slide. So the next slide shows you the property distribution, how, how the city has basically allocated this. And it, you can see roughly for the last 10 years, and, and even if I had extended this chart way back into the past, Northampton's pretty much been 80-20, 80% 80 residential, 20% commercial industrial. There's not been really any big shift in any way. Next slide. So in 2020, how the distribution will go if you decide to adopt a factor of one, which is going to be the recommendation. Uh, you can see the orange will, is the portion of the tax levy, which will be around $62 million that will be borne by the residential class. And then the blue is the commercial levy, which will be around $8 million. And the industrial levy, levy which will be about one point seven, And the personal property levy, which will be about one point four. So this is, how, this is how it breaks out, and you can see the pie chart pretty much shows the 80-20 kind of split. So if you turn to the next slide, I know it's going to be hard to see on the screen, but I included this just to show you how the levy limit is calculated. So the levy limit is the maximum amount of taxes that we can um, assess to the properties in Northampton, and this is limited again by two and a half. So how the levy limit for 2020 is calculated is you take the 2019 levy limit, which was 59,108,954. So you start with that, <coughs> add 2.5%. 2.5% is 1,477,724. Then you add that million dollars of new growth that Joan just talked about, which is 1,063,084. And you come up with a subtotal of 61,649,762. If you look below it, there's a number that says 92 million. So the levy ceiling is, the calculation is if our tax rate was $25 per thousand, which is the maximum we can go, we could tax up to 92 million. But again, Two and a half is what <coughs> limits how much we can go up each year. So at some point we could get as high as that, which we won't. But it um, it is we are limited by the two and a half percent. So our tax levy, the maximum we can we can uh, assess is sixty one six forty nine seven sixty two plus the debt exclusions. So down below you see we have a debt exclusion. We have two that we are paying for the police station, and we have one more payment on uh, the high school project. So 2020 is the last debt exclusion payment on the high school, and from that point on, the only debt exclusion that we have that's added on to the tax rate will be the police station. So you can see, you get your levy limit, which is the 61,649, you add the debt, 
because the debt is on top of your levy limit. So you come up with a maximum allowable levy of 62,251,770. So if you turn to the next page, so what you are deciding tonight is whether you want to, to do a single or a split rate. <coughs> this is what the hearing's about. So again, if you were to split the rate, it doesn't change the total. The total pie is still the same. Splitting the rate just means you're going to apportion the pie differently. Instead of that 80-20 split, you would be apportioning it differently. So if you choose a factor of one, which is the recommendation of the mayor and the principal assessor, um, this means that the tax rate will be the same for all classes of property. You have the option of choosing a factor of less than one or more than one. If you choose a factor of less than one, you are opting to shift the tax burden among the classes by reducing the amount that the residential side pays and increasing it for the commercial, industrial, and personal property classes. You can also do a factor that's greater than one, and that has the converse um, action of actually reducing the share of the commercial, industrial, and personal property payers and increasing the residential. Mm -hmm. So if you turn to the next page, you can see a single tax rate, what we originally estimated when before we got our certification was that the tax rate would for 2020 would actually be going down would be going to 1691. That's in part because valuations increased with the revaluation. So again, we're not, um, people are not going to necessarily see their tax bill go down because they are getting the two and a half percent increase and they're getting the, t the, the value of their home went up. So conversely, the tax rate has to go down because again, we have to stay within that, that levy limit. So we were estimating the tax rate will be about 1691. Uh, last year it was 1737. Seven, th 17 Actually, when we finished doing the recap and getting our estimated receipts certified, I think it'll be probably more like 1677. <coughs> so it's already, we thought 46 cents, it'll be going down uh, a little bit more. Um, so we'll have that number for you when you do the second reading. For comparison purposes, we like to look at where our tax rate falls in relation to our neighboring communities. Because most, a lot of the communities haven't set their 2020 tax rate, this chart reflects last year. But you can see Northampton, when you compare us to Longmeadow, Greenfield, Amherst, Westfield, Holyoke, Chicopee, West Springfield, Agawam, and East Hampton for our residential rate, you can see we are on the low end of the residential rate. The other, ch the chart to the right of it shows where our commercial tax rate is. And because we have the same rate um, and some of these other communities don't, you can see again, we have among the lowest rate for our commercial, industrial, personal property but with our, compared with our neighbors. All right, if you turn to the next slide, you do, as I said, have the option of choosing a different factor. Um, if you were to do the maximum shift, and again, the DOR only allows you to make this shift in increments. So if you were to do the maximum allowable shift in one year, it would take the average single family home whose value is now at 331,635, and you could shift that, you could reduce their tax rate to somewhere around 1488, and they would save about $868. At the same time, you would be increasing the taxes on commercial and industrial properties. The average commercial property would increase about $5,000, and the average industrial property would increase about $5,700. So if you were to do a maximum shift that you're allowed to do, that's how it, that's how it would play out. If you look at the next slide, Single versus split tax rate. 236 communities in Massachusetts had a single tax rate in 2019. <coughs> 109 communities had a split rate in 2019, and they, their shift resulted in their commercial, industrial, and personal property paying from 25 cents more per thousand to as high as 22.89 per thousand. So you can see some communities do a, a major shift to um, 
have their commercial, industrial, and personal property pay more. Six Massachusetts communities did the opposite. They split the tax rate and put more of the burden on their residential uh, communities. And those six are all communities on the Cape. So you can see they're shifting onto the residential because it's going to hit the vacation homes. Mm -hmm. Typically, you, do, you might see a split rate being considered where the percentage of residential property to commercial industrial is more like 70-30. Most communities that are in the 80-20 don't, don't tend to split, the, split their tax rate. Also, you tend to see a split rate when the major tax paying corporation or company is difficult to move, like a power plant. Like the company can't say, you just raised my taxes, I'm going to move to another community. They're stuck there. So you tend to see uh, that be where you might have a split tax rate that would push the burden onto commercial and industrial. So the, I will say if a community does go to, from a single to a split rate, it is very difficult to go back, particularly if you have given the relief to your residential sector. It's very hard to go back to a single rate after you've split it. So the mayor and the principal assessor are recommending a factor of one. There are other options. Um, I've just put them up here. Uh, they are not available to you unless they were to be brought to you from the mayor. One is a residential exemption, which would shift the tax bur bur burden within the residential class from lower valued properties to higher ones. But the problem with that is it also shifts the burden to rental properties. So then rents go up. So it has it has a has a uh, you know unintended cons. Un unintended consequence there. And the small commercial exemption we have never used either. Um, that's because a lot of our small businesses actually don't own the property that they are in. And so they don't really benefit from this because they're renters. So the last slide um, shows you that the recommendation is for a residential factor of one. Again, what we illustrated here was a tax rate of 1691, and, and we will qualify that by saying when we come back to you in two weeks, it'll probably be even a little bit lower than that. Thank you, Director uh, Wright. Uh, any questions for our finance director or principal assessor from the council? Uh, this is a public hearing, so are there any members of the public who'd like to speak? For, against, or neutral? Mr. Mayor, are you, are you shifting and okay. are you seeking recognition? Uh, okay. So no other comments or questions from anyone during the public hearing process. Well, we have two down there, so Councilor Sherr. Um, forgive me if you explain this already, but what <coughs> determines the levy ceiling of 25% you said? Which I know that we, we can't go to that. So the levy ceiling is you take all the value of the property in the city, which I think is like three billion something, and you divide that by a thousand and you times it by twenty-five dollars per thousand, and that's how you come up with that ninety-two million. Okay. So that is the maximum tax rate we can have. Plus debt exclusions. Okay. So okay, so Councilor Boyd. Um I, I do this every time we have this conversation because I I know in the past there have been some rather <coughs> Uh, excited <coughs> discussions about splitting the tax rate um, and um, and actually you guys make a very cogent and 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 very good case for keeping the factor of one um, as I said as I've noted before I come from Holyoke I originally came from Holyoke. Holyoke has the highest commercial tax rate in the state I believe um, and as such they which at the time made perfect sense because, as you said, they had, it was a factory town. It was, a, a, it was paper and textiles, and they, the whole city was built to support them pretty much. It's all structured. It was a planned industrial city. And that was, went along swimmingly until such time, and it was somewhat coincidental with the advent of uh, Proposition 2 and a half, all those businesses left Holyoke. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Trying to get as a political prospect, you can't get your uh, homeowners to volunteer to bear the offset that needs to be made in order to subsidize your the revenue in your community. And this has always been Holyoke's struggle. 
and it's not just Holyoke, it's Lowell, Lawrence, these are other communities that all, uh, all once upon a time enjoyed <coughs> great expansion and great wealth. But as a result, they're now trapped. They're kind of preserved in amber um, in this situation where that they can't extract themselves from, uh, unless by some fiat or some decree, or the political will for the community to actually assume a greater tax burden. And as such, it's worth noting that actually the resi Holyoke's residential property taxes are higher than Northampton's. Um, we weren't an industrial town. Northampton never was a giant industrial town. It didn't, it, it actually was a mix of things. It was the county seat. It was where farmers came and transacted. It is where it was, the, it's a college town. It had a rather eclectic mix, um, all of which would benefit from maintaining the factor of one. As, as clearly as, I mean, I think if you can step back and look at our situation compared to a number of other communities, particularly ones surrounding us, we're in pretty decent shape. And so this is the case I've always had to make to a number of my constituents who are always wondering why, and, and particularly with the advent of <coughs> the, the changing marijuana industry, um, why can't they bear the greater burden? And uh, Trying to find uh, a temporary relief on, on a business that's ephemeral, more or less, uh, is not a good way, is not a very sound or practical way to proceed to, to subsidize your community. So as, as always, I will continue to, I will <coughs> be inclined to vote in favor of the factor one, but it's always, I feel it's kind of imperative that we actually explain why this is, um, not designed to oppress property owners. In fact, actually our biggest challenge is trying to keep rents down lower, trying to not burden business owners who are already kind of onerous uh, rental rates and, <coughs> and other challenges, not to burden property owners. And the idea is the, your frontline communities to protect them, the ones who are more vulnerable economically. And you, you start pulling this loose thread in the sweater with some clever idea of adjusting the factor, their unintended consequences usually tend to hurt the people who are most wrong. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Any other members of the council like to speak? Council LaBarge. Yes. Um, Susan, I'm going to support the, um, the singer, single factor one um, tax rate. I would like to know how many building permits have been administered since from last year till now with an increase, do you know? I because uh, to me that it's about the, the same. the value of a building permit. You get something like Pleasant Street, you know. Because I'm talking about like additions added on. I would say it's similar because we had like 900,000 last year in, in new construction and this year we had and that helps a too. Oh right. yeah, uh, the new growth is is you put a deck on your house, you you know you add an addition, you renovate a bathroom, all of these things. The in assessors go out and look at yep. all of the building permits when they're all finished. All the new houses, right. all the new condos. That's what I mean because you see more and more of that happening. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I, I did notice an absence in the inventory of, uh, of course, it makes sense, I suppose, or not, the new courthouse in on Atwood Drive, in the it's Atwood Drive. Um, they, that's the building. Yeah. That, that, that's the Atwood Drive property, the new Atwood Drive property that's continued. Okay. Yeah, All right. Mostly it's medical buildings, but that one is more on Okay, good, because it was described as a medical building. That that. Okay. The, the that's a partial uh, Okay. Up the rest of it next year when they're have it completely finished. Right. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, members of the public, either? Can I say something? Certainly. Would you like to? I pay taxes, and I'm concerned about seeing the college. Would you like to give your name for the record so we know who you are? Please. Stand. Oh, it's up to you. You can sit if you prefer. No, I'm just concerned that you know they own so much Elm Street. They get to buy any house that goes on the, on the market, they get to buy it. What happens to all that tax money from those houses? And 
does Smith pay a fairly amount of money in taxes, or do they not? Well, Smith. And I was thinking that if they paid more in tax, or paid their share in taxes, it wouldn't be so hard on some of the residents. They're one of the areas. highest taxpayers in the city. A lot of the property we are able to tax. On Smith College? Yes. So when they buy a house, that property tax? Well, we have to look at it and see what they're going to do with it. They usually rent it. I, I would assume. Well, if you want to come in, you can go through the book and see which is taxable and which isn't. Or I can give you a list if you're interested. Yeah, it's, it's fair to say that they're rental properties. We ta They pay property tax. Yes. And like the, the commercial building, it's really just their core campus that has that carries out their educational mission. They don't pay tax. It's significant because they're student there pays 60, 70,000 a year um, to go. And it's like I've, I've, uh, believe me, I've been up that hill before about trying to ask them to pay in lieu of taxes, but um, but we cannot tax them under the law. We are not allowed to tax them. They are exempt. They are a charitable organization. So um, Until they change that yes, law, until we they don't change have the ability. Law. But right. they do pay taxes again. They are, they are the largest taxpayer in the city. And they do pay, so you know, you've probably been to Hungry Ghost Bread. That that building is owned by Smith College, but they it's a, they have to pay taxes because it's a commercial enterprise or any of their other housing, rental housing, any of that. Um, but their core campus, um, like the beautiful new library edition, we aren't getting um, new taxes on that. For example, the hundred million dollar edition, wow. um, because it's an academic library. So, um, but anyway, that's it's more of a question for Beacon Hill than. <laughs> so any other comments would you like to say anything else no okay anyone else um, I think this is getting pretty close to being a sacred cow in Northampton we're pretty adamant generally in our support of single tax rate I don't think it should be such a sacred cow that we never discuss it so I actually agree uh, with Councillor Dwight that's important to talk about why uh, why we support what we support and I appreciate hearing from our principal assessor and our finance director as well <coughs> uh, I don't think it's the case that the only thing that businesses pay attention to is the tax rate I think there are many factors uh, that bear on economic development in a jurisdiction I think the tax rate is generally an important one when we talk about shifting the burden I believe it's generally motivated by a good uh, usually progressive instinct, which is the instinct to have people who can afford to pay more pay more. And I believe that's what's behind a lot of people's thought that perhaps we should shift it. I think when you look at some of the data, you see that it doesn't, it wouldn't really produce the kind of dramatic effects you may be thinking. And at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're, you still have a property tax, which is not a real, it's not a good tax. Uh, I mean, you're never going to be able to change the property tax so that it's, you know, reflective of means, which is what you really want to do. Um, but that being said, you know, I mean, the single tax rate, I think unless we had a, a really major effort to investigate you know, a, a serious proposal to change it with a lot more discussion than we've had this year, uh, it's not necessarily something we should avoid doing in the future. In fact, if, uh, if the next council wants to look at that, I'd say go right, go right ahead. But for today, I think uh, all the evidence seems to point towards maintaining the status quo, at least for the, the time being, from from my perspective. So, but I appreciate the discussion on it because we shouldn't just knee-jerk approve it uh, year after year. But it is an important discussion. Okay. So now I've I've said my piece. I'll call once again for any comment from anyone. So do I hear a motion? Move to uh, close the public hearing. Okay. Second. Those in favor of closing the hearing, please say aye. 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 Any abstention? Excuse me. So uh, the uh, hearing is closed, and this will come back up on the agenda soon. Uh, now, uh, no updates from me. Are there updates or one-minute announcements from any members of the council? Councilor Dwight. Um, a very well-attended meeting of the Charter Review Committee meeting at uh, Jackson Street School uh, occurred last Tuesday. No, not last Tuesday, Tuesday before that. Um, where actually it was the <laughs> it was the best attended meeting we've had since we first convened. 
And there were a number, number of people who spoke quite eloquently and testified to the need for uh, expanding voting rights to uh, residents who are not documented citizens in the community. Um, and using actually essentially the same principles, employing the same principles as the argument for expanding voting rights to 16 and 17 year olds in the city as well. So during the course of that discussion, and as I said, it was actually um, moving at times and, uh, and very persuasive, the committee voted to add one more recommendation that you will be seeing. Well, maybe not you, <laughs> but it will be presented to the council. It ho it ho there will be a presentation to this council before it adjourns its session. But then the new council, as it convenes, will be discussing this. And that is to include uh, municipal voting rights for non-residents, I mean, uh, non-documented citizens in, but who can prove their residency here in Northampton. Um, there was testimony, one person testifying in opposition to that, that's expressing a concern of adding things like expanded voting rights. Um, he felt that it would be met with uh, disfavor by the legislature and would somehow impact all the rest of the package and would be rejected by the legislature because it would be considered frivolous or unnecessary. Um, and that was discussed and debated, and essentially the point being that the, it's not an all or nothing prospect when you present your petition to the legislature. They consider, hopefully they consider in any event, each item as, their, as, as it applies. So we'll, we shall see. And the conclusion was you can't get it if you don't ask for it. It, do, it's, it was not a strong enough case to say we will not ask for this. Mm -hmm. So. So you show uh, uh, right now um, the the committee uh, the committee is finalizing the report, and I expect that we will have an opportunity to see it before uh, before this this term ends. Thank you. And yeah, on December fifth, right. our first meeting in December is uh, 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 the chair uh, will be presenting, I guess, yeah. your initial report. That's the hope. Full council. Good. Uh, other. Announcements? None? Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Mayor, do you have any communications to? I just had one communication. That was just to remind counselors and the public that um, the um, annual uh, Northampton Veterans Day parade will happen this Monday on Veterans Day. Um, and the um, marchers will line up at 10 a.m. at Lamprin Park on Bridge Street. And uh, the parade will step <coughs> up at 11 a.m. Um, and make its way down to um, Ski <coughs> Park, and there'll be a free ceremony. So, just wanted to make sure the public, I know there was some discussion about the fact that there had not been a parade last year, and so the Veterans Council has um, uh, renewed its effort to, to get a parade out there, um, and so they're hoping that people will come out and, um, and support veterans in our community and the men and women who wore the uniform of this nation. So, thank you. To the yes, thank you. Um, there also this Saturday um, at 8:30 in the morning at the um, Elks on Spring Street is the Veterans Breakfast. From they say arrive at 8:30, and it's probably going to get over with about 11. And all veterans are free. We do that. They do that every year. And your spouses or whatever, it's ten dollars per ticket for them. They do ask you to call and get a ticket in advance, though. I think they're trying to make sure they have enough. So they're, they're asking to call, I think the Elks. Can you call the Elks? We have them, too. Yeah, okay, yeah, so just, okay, excellent. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay, hearing none, uh, we will go to the consent agenda. The consent agenda read, uh, has the following items, which I will read at the request of any one counselor. We will remove the item for a separate vote. Uh, the minutes of October 17th, 2019, 19165, the secondhand dealer license application for Eco ATM LLC. It's a petition for an annual license for the secondhand dealer for that company. Uh, 180 North King Street, uh, inside Walmart number 2901. I didn't know what number Walmart it was until just now. 
Uh, owner is Hunter B uh, Bjorkman, uh, of 10121 Barnes Canyon Road, uh, San Diego, California, 92121. And so a vote on that will be the equivalent of granting the petition. Uh, 19168, uh, this is an appointment to the Conservation Commission. A vote on this will be the equivalent to referral to the Committee on City Services. The question of appointing Alec Bernstein of 266 Grove Street, number seven, Northampton, for a term of October 2019 through June 2022. Move, move approval of the consent Second. agenda, please. Second it. There's no removal. Uh, there is no discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Abstention, so the consent agenda is approved. And at this time, we will recess for the finance chaired by Councilor Murphy. Excellent. Where would you call our roll, please? Here. Present. 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 Here. Excellent. Uh, first item is to approve uh, the minutes from October 17th. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. And a second. Any changes necessary? Hearing none, then all in favor of the minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, thank you. Um, the first thing is 19161. It's an order to establish a tax classification for FY 2020. Uh, order that the Northampton City Council approves a residential factor of one for fiscal 2020. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second? Okay. Any, I think we had most of our discussion already. Is there any more discussion in finance? Hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great, thank you. Um, the next is 19162, in order to establish a revolving fund for 593 Elm Street for the rental of that building. Order that the city hereby establishes a revolving fund under, under Mass General Law 40, Section 3, for the deposit of proceeds from the rental of 593 Elm Street starting in fiscal year 2020, which begins July 1, 19. The monies received from such rentals shall be kept separate and apart from other city funds in the Treasury and may be expended by Smith Folk um, trustees without further appropriation for the upkeep of the facility and that the city accepts the proviso that any such balance remaining in the account at the close of the fiscal year shall remain in the account and may be expended for the upkeep and maintenance of any facility under the control of the Smith Vocational and Agricultural School trustees. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second. And questions of the mayor for this one? <coughs> <clears throat> you, um, you may recall that you have on your agenda tonight a second reading on the surplusing of that same property to, to go out and renew the lease. And so this is basically um, the rents that are collected under that lease go into this revolving fund, which we're establishing, and then are basically used to, for upkeep um, of the property. So it's sort of in sync with the um, item you're taking a second reading vote on tonight. Mm -hmm. And again, this is the uh, building they rent near the corner of South Main mm -hmm. Street and, yes. and, and Elm yes. Nonatuck Federal, that yeah. intersection. It's Any other questions on this Children's one? Advocacy Center yeah. is the current. That's who they yeah. lease it to. Then um, do we have a motion, Fines? I made a motion. Okay, we're all set with the motion. Then all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, thank you. Uh, the next is 19163. It's an order to purchase 20 acres for the Sawmill Hills Greenway. Um, upon the recommendation of the mayor and planning and sustain sustainability and the conservation commission, whereas the open space and recreation plan for 2019 through 25 recommends filling gaps within the sawmill Hills Greenway, and whereas the city has an option to purchase 20 acres from Joyce E. Millette Revocal Trust and uh, also Charles Millette, abutting the sawmill Hills Greenway and near other Greenway parcels for $20,000. Uh, so please order that the Conservation Commission is authorized to purchase or otherwise acquire for conserva conservation and passive recreation purposes as provided under Mass General Law 40 subsection 8C, any fee, easement, or conservation restriction as defined by Mass General Law Chapter 184 subsection 31 or any other interest in the above land and any immediately adjoining land and that the City Council hereby accepts such conservation restriction that the Conservation Commission is authorized to grant uh, conservation Christians on any land so acquired and that the Conservation Commission is authorized to contract for and expend any federal, state, or other aid available for the project. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second. Uh, so I will be um, playing Mr. Fiden this evening because he could not attend. Um, but this is a pretty easy one. If you see the little green sliver there, um, it's sort of that isolated parcel 
um, and everything else around it is land that we already um, control as part of the uh, as part of that greenway. Um, the land has been assessed for twenty thousand um, dollars. There's actually five thousand dollars owed in back taxes on the property, um, so we will be paying. Uh, the, we'll actually be the owner will be receiving fifteen thousand um, dollars, and then we. You may recall that every year, as part of the capital program, we have a tax title uh, line item for Mr. Fiden to be able to clear tax title. So that will be cleared using that money. Um, and we already have a private donor um, who has um, agreed to donate the $15,000 to cover the purchase price. Um, so basically, it will help us clean up a tax title um, as well as acquire this remaining little piece of the puzzle, if you will, of this uh, Greenway property. And it's sort of, you know, it's in its way back acre ridge between, you know, Sylvester Road and Chesterfield Road and Ryan Road and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Spring Street. It's sort of like smack dab in the middle of all that. So, um, so that's what's being asked of you this evening. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this one? No? And then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the last one for this evening is 19166. It's in order to accept a donation of steel toed boots. Order that the city of Northampton accepts a donation of 100 pairs of surplus waterproof steel toed boots valued at approximately $5,000 and donated to the Northampton Department of Public Works by Michael Aronson of Return Shoes in Florence in accordance with Massachusetts General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Do we have a motion to finance? Motion. Second? Second. Um, Free boots. This was a, yes, a re, I think it's rerun shoes. And um, they approach the department. They have these steel toe boots, waterproof. And all of our DPW personnel are required to wear steel toe boots. They all got feet. OSHA regulation. And so they were offering us these 100 pairs. So um, we would like to gratefully accept that gift. And because it is a gift of real property, we need the city council's approval to do that. So we would like, I would ask you to gratefully accept this gift from Mr. Aronson. Mm -hmm. Any, uh, yes? Just a quick question. So um, this is great. <coughs> so really appreciate Presently, does the DPW provide boots to workers? Um, there is a, um, there is a, a, an allowance that is provided for them to purchase um, if they want to purchase uh, boots. Um, so, you know, that it's, it's, a, it's a reimbursement program to be able to purchase them. So, um, so again, these will at least provide an inventory of additional boots that people may want to have access to. Okay, I'm just hoping it's not going to be something that, you know, if there, if there are people who, I mean, uh, if it's just going to be a gift to employees or if it's going to be something that will no, not it's, against their... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, right now you, you know, you're required to have steel toe boots. And yes. in some of our collective bargaining contracts, if you go out and purchase a pair of boots, you can be reimbursed for them. Right. So, um, so it's not taking any salary away from anyone or anything like that. It, they just, it may, be, it may be a way to help people um, have the boots if a boot gets damaged or cut or, or you know, so that's. Okay. Yeah. Just a curious okay. uh, detail. Yep. Yep. Thank no problem. you. Any other questions for the mayor on the boots? No? How did the gift come about? I believe uh, the DPW was approached by, uh, by Mr. Aronson, who um, was probably thinking, what organization in the city needs a lot of you know, steel-toed, waterproof, you know, they're sort of construction-type boots. Do so, they have extras? Um, I believe these are uh, something they're not selling anymore. I think they're, it's like a discontinued model or surplus model or something like that. So um, he's, they're trying to clear out their um, inventory. So, or, so they, they are going to throw them away or try to find some place to donate them to. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would just like to know. I think it's good to ask questions before we accept gifts from businesses that operate within the, you know, jurisdiction or yeah. that, we, that concerns us. Yeah. Any other questions on this one? No. <clears throat> then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that's the end of our, our agenda. So a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Second. Yes. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to go down a series of financial orders. And the first is 19161 in order to establish a tax classification for fiscal year 2020. Move approval, please. Second. Second.
Ten seconds. We need a little discussion on this financial order in the city council. Hearing none. Uh, roll call. Yes. 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 Approved on first reading. Uh, next is one nine one six two in order to establish a revolving fund for five nine three Elm Street building. Rent. Move to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion in the city council? Roll call. Please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Is approved on first reading <coughs> as well. Um, next, 19163, in order to purchase 20 acres for Sawmill Hills Greenway. Move to approval. And seconded. Any further discussion in the City Council? Mm -hmm. Roll call. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Yes. It's proven first reading. Next, 19166, in order to accept donation of steel toed boots. Uh, move Second. Any discussion on this? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. No. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Yes. Okay, it's approved in first reading. Uh, we have some financial orders on second reading. First is 19151, in order to authorize payment of a prior year bill. Move to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion on this order, please? Uh, Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Okay, that was approved in second reading. Next is 19152 in order to transfer slash appropriate funds for fiscal year 2020. Move to approve. Preservation purposes made by Councilor Labar. Second. Second by Councilor Dwight. Any further discussion? There's a process note here. Would you like to? Sure, yes. Yeah, I thought you were. Yes, there's a, um, an amendment to the Move to amend. It says it's requested. Well, we have it. Okay, so Councilor Joy has made a motion to amend. So second. second. So when we say it is requested, who is requesting? Sarah Bell had actually sent an email requesting of <coughs> the staff person for the Community Preservation Committee. Do we have this thing on the screen? Um, or it's before me. I just want to see exactly where. So, any further discussion on the amendment to the clerical? All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So, to the order itself, any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, uh, roll call, please. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shara? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Yes. Okay, it's approved on second reading. Uh, final financial order on second reading is 1954 in order to authorize surplus five and a quarter acres on East Ham Road. Okay. Second. Okay, made in second. Any discussion on second reading? <coughs> Hearing none. Roll call. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. 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 Okay. Approved on second reading. Uh, we have an order, 19150, in order to expand Parsons Brook Greenway. Second reading. 
Motion to approve this. Second. Okay, made by Councilor Klein, second by Councilor Dwight. Any discussion? Okay. Roll call. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. And Councilor Nash. Yes. Proven second reading. We have four ordinances for referral. Before we get motions on, let's discuss them all together in general. Uh, where should they all go besides legislative matters? Do any of these four? I'll read them for the benefit of the public. Excuse me. Uh, these are going to be 19156, an ordinance relative to parking on Phillips Place. 19157, ordinance relative to parking on Walnut Street. Uh, 19164, an ordinance to amend Chapter 16. Departmental Revolving Funds, Delete Senior Services Gift Shop Revolving Fund, and 19167, an ordinance requiring the use of organic pest management practices in the municipal, in the municipal places where children play. Okay, so all those go to legislative matters. Uh, do they go anywhere else? Okay, so is there a motion to refer these as a group to legislative the matters? To as a group. And by Councilor LaBarge, uh, anyone seconds that? A second. Any discussion on the referral? Any additions? Any comments? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So those are referred to legislative matters. Thank you. Uh, now we have ordinances, uh, a number of them actually, to uh, although many are on second reading, to work on. Uh, first, 19159, ordinance to amend section 312-109 to convert six-hour long-term parking spaces on Bridge Street to two-hour parking. This is the first reading. Uh, the mayor's office uh, is respectfully requesting waiver of referral to committee uh, to expedite approval due to the proximity of the holiday shopping season. Okay, so let's get this motion to approve um, the floor. Uh, move to approve, please. Uh, yeah, okay. So wait, let me see. So this is the first time this appears on our agenda, am I correct? Yeah. Okay. So I didn't really... Uh, uh, grasp that. So normally this would have been in the previous section to refer to uh, matters. I see. But there's a request to debate not doing that. So let's discuss what this is first. I see Mr. Mayor, you've gotten up. Would you like to describe <coughs> the actual order? I realize this is a somewhat of an extraordinary request, but um, I, I wanted to at least make the case to the council for why I thought it was important and why I think it's, um, and we've been contacted over the last two or three or four weeks by a number of businesses. You've heard from some of them. Um, uh, so back in the early 2000s, and I was, I think I wasn't on the council, but I was involved with the Transportation and Parking Commission. The, um, we were beginning to create uh, the 10 hour meters around the city, um, largely because we were trying to find longer term parking in some cases for employees. And I know that um, our late uh, parking um, director, uh, Bill Attender, um, would often go out and sort of scout around for uh, metered areas where people just didn't, generally didn't park during the day. Like we had meters there, but people just generally didn't park for whatever reason. Um, one example of that you may remember uh, or think about is on Strong Avenue. Um, Strong Avenue, there's meters there, but because all the businesses there are largely nighttime businesses, you could without fail go there during the day and there'd be like empty meters. So that was an area where we created some 10 hour spots. Um, and around the same time, you know, this area on Bridge Street, um, which is in front of what used to be, well, it is and was, but it, uh, some of us think of it as Augie's block. Uh, where Augie's rooming house was, um, and it was essentially just that, and, and then there were the, um, uh, the uh, antique stores on the first floor. Um, and as you know, that there's been some renovations there. There's now several retail portals there. There's um, your shop, and then there's a nail salon, and there's a number of other uh, businesses there. We've also had the roost, um, and some just a lot more activity. And so. Um, when you go down the stretch of Main Street um, from you know, starting up at the Academy all the way down um, to Bridge Street, all of our other meters we've converted to two-hour meters. They're all two-hour meters. We don't, we don't generally have long-term 10-hour meters on you know, sort of Main Street, if you will. And I, th I sort of think of this as sort of an extension of Main Street because it's you know, right in our main central business district. So recently they've noticed um, that um, there's just, there have been lots of long-term parkers who have just parked there. And 
we're, we're not quite sure. There's, we know that there's some new businesses that have opened. Uh, Familiars, for example, now is open. There's a number of other uh, new businesses. We don't know if that's what the shift is about for long-term parkers, but for whatever reason, um, they've been noticing that and wondering why, why is um, our street, you know, on-street parking in front of our store the only place on all of Main Street that has these 10-hour spaces. Um, and we really didn't have a good answer for it except just this, his, this historical anomaly. Um, and so um, the solution, obviously, is to just convert them to regular two-hour meters. Like, I mean, literally, if you cross the street to the Spoleto block, it's two-hour meters there. If you cross the street to where um, you know, there's no parking in front of the roost, but you know, from the bridge to the corner, um, you know, where the uh, what is the um, juice bar is on the corner now? I can't think of the name. Nourish. Nourish. Yeah, so from Market Street to the bridge, um, those are all two hours. But these six spaces in front of this retail uh, shop are 10 hour long term parking. Um, and so they're just not getting the turnover as a result. Um, and so the request has been made that um, could we convert them to two hours? Um, and I um, met with them and um, explained the process. And, um, and so they requested, could I just convert them now to two hours? Um, with the holiday season coming, et cetera, I said I could not do that. That would take um, the city council. It has to go through the city council to change the ordinance. And so that is why I'm requesting that you consider the possibility of just voting to make this conversion. Because I do think it's a very unique anomaly. Um, and it, it's, um, and, I, and I just feel like it, it, it could be something that you could handle at the full city council level. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Shara. Um, so I, I do know that people who work downtown park there, and someone told me probably like four years ago that that was sort of a regular space that she could park who works downtown. And we know that parking is a challenge for people who work in retail mm -hmm. um, and have to drive downtown to their jobs and can't move their car every two hours. Um, so is there a plan to replace these long-term spaces? Because those are very, very important for people who work downtown. Um, certainly we would look, I mean, we're always looking for opportunities to add more long-term parking. I mean, I don't know where they work, um, but there's lots of long-term parking, you know, available all throughout the city. And we've done studies that show there's capacity for long-term parking. The challenge is people like to park right near where they work or close to where they work. So I don't know where this particular person works. Those um, who work more like in the center of town, but they yeah. said, you know, like it, it makes sense for me to go three blocks and park over yep. there yeah. and then walk those blocks because I know I can park yeah. my car all day. Yep. I think the challenge, though, is that if whatever business they worked at, if there was a 10 hour parking lot in front of their business, they probably wouldn't appreciate that. I mean, that's just the most of our 10 hour lots or 10 hour on street parking is not on the main center. Um, street. It's it's off on side streets. It's either you know um, the Roundhouse lot or the um, uh, the Maplewood Shop lot. Um, there are some streets that have 10 hour, but it tends to be the streets like off of State Street, the ones you know up in the Smith College neighborhood. Uh, we don't have any uh, 10 hour parking right on Main Street. Um, so uh, certainly we will look to try to replace those spaces. But I, my challenge is I'm faced with eight or 10 businesses that are telling me that this is having a real impact because literally once you cross, um, you know, Market and Holly Street, the only on-street parking that's near their businesses that's metered is uh, 10 hour parking. So um, so there's not turn there's not the kind of turnover. So that's, I, um, I, I, they asked, I said I would bring it forward. I said that it's the council's purview. It's not my purview to do it, but I at least wanted to present the facts. You know, a business has got Oh, pardon me. Um, would you like to be recognized? You can uh, be recognized. You can, you can certainly do that if someone wishes to make the motion to do so from the council. I, I, I move to recognize the speaker. Is there a second to that? But you have uh, to come here just and, and just say those, your name Excuse me. And what excuse me. Is. Let's just maintain just a little bit of order here. Uh, so, first, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? So, welcome. The floor is yours. Hi, I'm Debbie Hall, and I have a shop on Bridge Street. And there are six parking spaces there. And we rely mostly on people stopping all the time, you know, out-of-towners. And lots of times, out-of-towners, if there's no parking on our street, they don't stop. 
and there's handicapped people, elderly ladies, like there's a lady came in my store today, she could hardly walk, and she had to go to the other store, and I'm like, where did you park? She says, oh, I had to park in the post office and I can hardly walk. She says, there's no handicapped parking. And then even if there was handicapped parking there, out of the six spaces, five of them are taken by permits. So there's one space for someone to park. And, and you know, like the nail salon, they rely on people coming and going. When someone's parked there all day long, there's no business. And even my business, when someone's parking there Monday through Friday, eight hours all day, it's a little frustrating because none of our customers can stop. And it's just frustrating. You know, and it's just, it, they shouldn't be parking there all day long. You know, maybe two hours, but, and then, you know, like, it's hard for the handicapped, too. And if, if I want to unload my truck or anything, I can't because someone's parked there all day long. Or I'll have to go there at night or real early in the morning. It's just difficult. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to hear your perspective directly on that. Thank you very much. Um, all right, a further discussion in the council on this, Councilor Dwight and then Councilor Nash. Um, actually, Your Honor, if, if, if provided, of course, this does move promptly without referral, what's the structural process by which the meters could be changed in a timely fashion that would satisfy them? This is part of the discussion that I was having before the meeting. Yeah. Um, th those are uh, red top meter heads. They yep. would have to be changed out. Yeah, we would, we would have to change out the red tops and, um, you know, we have an inventory of, of the two-hour meter, so we'd have to switch them out and then we'd have to do a quick, uh, we'd have to do a reprogram through Park Mobile um, so that they'd be switched on Park Mobile uh, from 10-hour to, to two-hour. you have a rough idea how long that would take? Um, I'd have to check with Brian in our parking division, but I'm thinking, you know, it could be done fairly expeditiously for just six meters. I mean, we're also, you know, we have the advantage that we're about to pull a bunch of two-hour meters out of Main Street because we're going to be converting to the kiosks. So we have a pretty good inventory of two-hour meters. Um, and the pr reprogramming doesn't take that long. So it's really, I mean, they can't start it until we have, they have the okay to do well, it. The law would have to be enacted. And That's then, true. And then, that is and true. Yeah. At which point then they'd have to get the work order and then... Yep change it out so yeah. it's not something that even in the best of circumstances would happen within this with the remainder of the week <coughs> um, oh it could I mean not tomorrow certainly not tomorrow but it could certainly happen within a week I would assume it's not it's not a very di it's not difficult um, the heads are interchangeable and and um, it's not like they have to pour new meters or you know it's, no, no. they've got a meter they just have to switch out the red tops so um, they could do it quite quickly okay, okay. Councillor Nash yeah uh, um, these people are business owners in Ward 3, and um, I met with them, what, three weeks ago? Debbie gave me a call. I was there about two minutes later, right? Because <laughs> I was up putting the sign up for uh, the new Pomeroy Historic District. So anyway, um, that, yeah, I, I think this is a change that needs to happen. It doesn't make sense that in front of these businesses, we have these long-term parking spaces. Um, I, and um, the, the thing that's important for me, though, is that we do have a discussion about uh, where these uh, people with these permits are going to now be parking. They're, they're, they're purchasing permits. <coughs> they're, they're employees of downtown. Where are they going to park? Um, and that, um, that that usually if we sent this through our committee process, that discussion would naturally happen. And, um, and that if we do expedite things here, my worry would be that we don't have that. You know, how, as Councillor Shara pointed out, where are these people going to park now? I, so in order to expedite things here, I'm willing to say, well, you know, it, if this were referred to the TPC, We'd be, the, the big issue would not be whether or not we switch these spaces, but where we find other parking spaces. Mm -hmm. And that I'm willing to have that discussion at TPC. I can put that on the agenda. And uh, so that we, we can tend to the issue that this change will make and um, that, but I, you know, I don't like foregoing sending stuff to the TPC, especially it's juicy stuff like this, but we can still have this conversation. Okay. 
Any other, uh, back to, well, anyone who hasn't spoken? Uh, just checking, now Councilor Scherer. I just want to clarify um, that the, those red cap meters aren't just used if you have a permit. You can get a permit for them, but you can also feed them. So people often use them who don't have, who don't buy a monthly permit, but they use them if they, you know, need to park for longer than two hours. So they have multiple uses. Any other discussion in the council? Okay, ready for my opinion? Um, my opinion is uh, uh, suspending our normal rules to refer this to uh, legislative matters and suspending our tradition of asking a mayoral commission, the Transportation and Parking Commission, to review this before acting uh, is totally the wrong way to go about uh, passing an ordinance. Um, I sympathize with the need to do this quickly, um, but the speed of, of doing this is, is hardly the only issue. In fact, I heard many different factors that uh, up until now I never really thought of actually at, at this location. I heard about handicapped parking, 15-minute uh, parking. I heard about uh, employee parking. Uh, it seems like a, a, a discussion that does have to uh, uh, happen uh, according to a deliberative process. And uh, I see students in the audience tonight and here is a difference between the legislative and the executive branches where the, you do want the executive branch to act quickly and deliberatively. It's actually um, a surprising virtue of the legislative side, which is in this case the city council, that we not always act quickly. And it can be frustrating. And I, I, I realize that. Uh, and as the former counselor from Ward 3, I sympathize with the current one about the many challenges in that part of, of, of the ward. Um, but what we ought not to do is is suspend the rules and just pass a, a law, you know, even if it is just about parking. After all, this is the level of, of, of stuff that we deal with with our laws. It is about parking and, and stuff like that. Uh, we ought not to do that. We ought to send this through the regular process where we hear not just from the affected businesses who do have an important voice in this, but other uh, users of this, which is uh, a public piece of public property. Uh, does not belong to any one constituency, which I know everyone in this room agrees with that. So uh, I, I oppose uh, foregoing our usual process. This should go to legislative matters. If it does not, uh, I will not support this on first reading because we need, this is a public road and we need to have a full discussion about it, okay? So that's my opinion. Any further discussion on this? Councilor Carney. Well, I'm curious as to whether, um, and I know we've done this in the past where we've had um, temporary um, parking changes, um, whether for special events or sometimes for holidays. And it sounds like we're, in terms of the timing and the concerns, it's about this upcoming holiday season. I'm wondering if there is a way that we can do both the deliberative process and do, you know, maybe even a, it could be considered something like a test run in the same way that we've tested certain, um, you know, parks or we, we've tested different things in the past. I'm wondering if this might be a time where it could be appropriate to, and I, I know mechanically and logistically it would be a nightmare unless we were to put yellow bags over them all and say free parking until December 31st on these six as a way to um, experiment. That's all just off the top of my head in terms of thinking of a solution. And um, I think this was similar to the conversation about um, um, a stop sign on Fulton Avenue near uh, whatever, the, the pot store. Um, it is a request there too, actually for very legitimate reasons to um, expedite putting in a stop sign, two stop signs. And we did do exactly what Councillor Carney uh, suggests. Um, there is a law that I exists now that allows us to promulgate temporary traffic regulations. The question for me was, would parking rules be a traffic regulation? Uh, I could make the case that they are, but I, I would want to check. What I would suggest, if what I would like is to not vote on this tonight, to refer it. And then if we can do it, I would like to bring an order like we brought with uh, Fulton Avenue uh, to put in a temporary parking regulation because of the holidays, I'd be willing to do that. It would also help us gather kind of data, in a sense, anecdotal data, but about the change. But then we got to do this the right way. But uh, Councillor Carney, I like your uh, I like your suggestion very much. So 
Um, let's see, Councilor Bidwell has not spoken, then we'll go to Councilor well, I was just going to say. Well, actually, Councilor Bidwell. I'm sorry about the. Um, well, I'm, I'm sorry. You, I, but, so do you want to defer to Councilor Bidwell since he has not spoken? Or? Well, it wasn't even a debate point. It was a point of order. And it just oh, simply. Oh, you a point of order. Please yeah. state So your the point. Uh, sending it to legislative matters actually delays this discussion. Um, Till the next council meeting, of course, uh, which would which would put it um, yeah, two weeks deeper Friday. into the month. But I don't. I, I think that that's not actually completely unreasonable, given the fact that oh. we could do this through legislative matters, put it on the agenda, and process it. Just just as a point of order. Thank you for that information, Councilor Bidwell. Um, I, I actually share the concern about uh, the deviation from our normal procedures <clears throat> and. Not notwithstanding the importance of this issue and the hardship uh, that I that I fully understand the business owners are experiencing, but I am I am a little bit reluctant to set the precedent of of uh, just totally without any kind of referral, just just acting on it right right here and now. And I do think it's appropriate that we explore uh, a solution like that proposed by Councillor Carney. Why not uh, allow the process to unfold in due time? Uh, but in the meantime, uh, use our what I hope is our ability through an order to provide some some intermediate solution. So I, I would be supportive of that approach as well. Thank you, Councillor. Any, anyone else? Uh, certainly. Motion to recognize all the speakers here that we have. So moved. Councillor Dwight, seconded by. Second. Councillor Cheryl, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, my name is Jeannie Mulvey, and I have the store Retro Jeannie on Bridge Street. And I just think that um, it's a hardship not to have parking for our stores during Christmas and six people that are employees in town somewhere taking the spaces. There's certainly six spaces that they can park in, but we're missing out on customers. And I just think it's important that you pass this quickly, not wait to have another meeting in December. And then after the holidays, maybe it'll get passed. Yes, uh, thank you, and we think your your perspective is 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 has been communicated well, and I think people hear what you're saying. Um, so, Councillor Dwight, just to be clear, um, if we go through the normal process, actually, we would have this done by the next council meeting, which is not in December. It's, it comes up in in uh, two weeks, and uh, by which point. It still precedes the holiday. It still precedes, I think, it even precedes uh, Black Friday, and the other, uh, the time that we had had set for downtown shopping, and so it wouldn't come after the holidays. It wouldn't. It would. It would come with ample time. Not clearly, obviously, you would want as many weeks as you possibly can get. But the concern, of course, is. The deviation from the normal process by which we conduct law in this one instance, that's a precedent that really actually a lot it makes it more and more difficult as we proceed. The, the recommendation that uh, Councilor Carney's made, which is that it would, it would provide you the relief while we continue to deliberate and debate it, so that it wouldn't, the meter heads wouldn't be changed out, but there would be special designation that would allow for the parking. Mr. Mayor, address that, Councilor. I mean, yes, you may. If we make it free parking, that will actually be worse than the 10-hour mm -hmm. parking. I mean, it wasn't saying free. Oh, okay, parking. I just I don't know what we could do temporarily. Like well, that's area. that's what we're trying to figure okay, out now. Right. No, 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 not not free parking. No, no. No, I just I, you would say what, Councilor Kerr. I just didn't know. What you I didn't know saying. what other mechanism. Yeah. I I don't know what other. I mean, mechanism all we could do would be. be to physically change out the meter. Um, so that would be the only thing we could do. So I, you would just have to tell us. And I don't know how that, I'd have to look at the ordinance to know how you enact that temporary parking change. I'm not really sure. Um, we, if there's mechanical failures, I'm allowed <laughs> to do temporary measures, like when the parking garage was broken or things like that. But I don't know that this fits into that. That's category. not the case here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, well, what it is, just before we go to Councillor Nash, is uh, we, we just, in fact, the very next thing we're going to vote on is an ordinance that we uh, put, uh, came forward originally with the same request. And we did not act on the request to spend the rules about stop signs at Fulton Avenue. Instead, we invoked a section of whatever, Chapter 312, this is a transportation parking section of the code. There is a law that basically gives us the ability to pro um, promulgate tra uh, temporary traffic regulations. So it would be an order, and I'd be willing to have two readings on it 
if we determine that it is lawful to do. And I can make a commitment to work with the Chair of Transportation and Parking and the Council from Ward 3 to look at that um, if we refer this to legislative matters tonight. Okay? So, uh, uh, Councillor Nash. Um, so, I, I, Councillor Dwight, I think your timing's off because if, uh, if we refer something tonight, um, it, normally it would have to go to tra uh, TPC before it goes to legislative matters. And then, so then we'd be looking at the next legislative matters, which is in December. And this is, as the, the Ward 3 Councillor, what I'm trying to avoid, which means right. that, you know, if we do two readings on it, you know, in the normal, you know, two weeks apart, we'd be looking at December 19th. And. Well, if I may uh, respond, it was directed. Please, yes. Um, that's only if we refer to TPC. If we do the minimum that's required as we as we discuss law, we simply only have to send it to legislative matters where it can be on the next agenda. And okay. TPC will, and then with the understanding that as you promised, the TPC will address all the associated issues that are that arise as a result of this. So. Um, I'm amenable to that idea. Yeah, that's why. So kind of. When does TPC next meet? Uh, a week from Tuesday. TPC can put whatever it wants on the agenda without a referral from the right. state. That's a as well. Right. All right. Any other discussion from the city council I on think this? So. so actually, the motion was to approve. So I'd yes. like to amend that motion. That motion, if I could. You want to amend the motion to approve? To, to turn it into approval. Uh, to referral. I'm sorry. No need because that's just a subsidiary motion. So oh. you're going to make a motion to refer to legislative matters. Okay. That's what I heard from Councillor Dwight. Is there a second? I'll second. Second up. Thank you, Councillor Bidwell. Discussion on the motion to refer to legislative matters. Uh, Councillor uh, Nash. Yeah, it's just to be clear for, so what kind of time frame are we looking at here? So we're looking at something coming to Council in two weeks that may be a temporary change. I'm, uh, I'm for my constituents here, I'm uh, I, I will work with you <coughs> if you wish, or I'll do it myself to just put forward an order for a temporary uh, parking change that lasts, you know, through the end of the year or something. And I'll bring that to the next meeting, if it's lawful to do, which I don't know if it is. Okay. Uh, Council Bidwell. Well, again, just on, on, on the timing, if, if, if it comes out of legislative matters and comes back, back here on the 21st. At, uh, two weeks from tonight, okay. we could do. I would certainly be amenable at that time. I suspect others might also to doing two readings at that time. Mm -hmm. And if uh, the mayor believes that uh, within within a week's time, by expediting matters, uh, the actual change could be made, then then we, we we could still explore something temporary. But that that would put us in position to have the the actual ordinance in place right around Thanksgiving. It's not optimal, but it's but it's better than uh, it's better than letting it letting it drift through the holidays. Okay, good point. Councillor Klein. I have a really quick question. Is it not too late to get it onto the agenda of legislative matters because we have uh, only one it, it is on the agenda session. already. Oh, it is. Okay. Laura, Laura, and uh, her, and her <laughs> continuing wisdom anticipated this as a possibility. Uh, fix it in. <laughs> yes, it is Thank already you. on the agenda. <laughs> magic. It's magic. Well, nonetheless, we have a motion to refer. to refer it. Um, any discussion on the motion to legislative matters? All those in favor of referral, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Abstentions. I believe we should also refer it to the Transportation Parking Commission. Uh, the council can decide whether it wishes to wait for the, rec for the recommendation or not. So moved. Thank you. Uh, is there a second to that? Second. Councilor Barton, any discussion on that referral? Okay. All those in. Councilor Dwight? No, I'm just confused as to what that does to our. Uh, yes. Well, potentially screws it up. It just yeah. lets them, well, it lets them also consider it. Well, no, as, as Councilor O'Donnell rightly points out, the TPC can put anything on their agenda without a referral. And I think the referral just sort of gums things up here a little bit, at least uh, in, in, our, in our efforts to expedite this, I think that does the opposite. 
Uh, I'd like to withdraw the motion. Okay. So the motion is withdrawn. Um, I have no interest in expediting this, just to be clear. I want this to go through the normal process. I mean, I used to be the chair of the TPC myself. Uh, I've worked with Councilor Sheriff, you know, I've worked with Councilor Nash. And before he was on the TPC, he was on the TPC, like, in the back somewhere. <laughs> it's been very attentive to these issues. You know, I'm hearing needs for potentially handicapped parking spaces, maybe 15-minute spaces. I mean, there's a lot to discuss here, and uh, the TPC is a good forum for it. Um, it's up to the council. The council is not required to wait oh. for. Excuse it me, one second. Uh, the council is not required to wait for the recommendation from the Transportation and Park Commission. If you wish, we can just proceed. Okay, but for I, I think it is appropriate. This is a whole commission that has the chief of police, the director of the DPW. Central Services, planning, two councillors, citizens. It is the forum where we discuss parking changes. Downtown is a pretty important part of Northampton <coughs> where this, should, this conversation should be had. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, Councillor Carney, then Councillor Sheriff. Thanks. Um, again, I, I would withdraw my motion, um, but also ask the chair of TPC if um, he intends to take this matter up on your own rather than as a referral from the council. As Councillor Dwight considers that the, <clears throat> the referral itself might gum things up. That was addressed to you. Council. Yes, please. Yeah. So, so my thought was that there's, uh, that this is gonna set in motion some other questions around where the people with permits are gonna park. And, um, and that, uh, and also looking at the other man, uh, issues that uh, Councillor O'Donnell mentioned about maybe exploring some handicap parking. So, um, yeah, I, I can put those things on the agenda and we can discuss those outside of this, I believe, and, um, and, and, and make recommendations. Um, okay, uh, then so I'll, I'll continue. I don't know if I need to, the second needs to also withdraw. No. No, okay. Got rid Thanks. of it. All right, thank you. For now, Councilor Shara. Um, oh, and then Councilor Klein after Councilor Shara. So, are, as, since things must go to legislative matters last, as the last step, are you suggesting that when it goes to legisma legis legislative matters first and we treat that as the last step and sort of on the side it goes to transportation and parking? Or are you saying that it would go to legislative matters, then it would go to TPC, then it would have to go back to legislative? Came back here. I think Councillor, uh, the Committee on Legislative Matters has dis discretion about when they wish to act. Uh, the rules state that they may choose to be the last committee to act, but they do not have to. And of course, there's a distinction between a council committee and a mayoral commission. Uh, we never have to wait for the, uh, a mayoral commission to uh, opine. So the committee can decide, and part of its decision could be we will proceed. You know, we're going to say that. The timing of this is more important than hearing from the Transportation and Parking Commission, and they can make that decision. So I leave it up to the committee to decide. And they both go to these places at the same time, and they can act independently. Yeah. Uh, who is next? I'm sorry. Councilor Klein. Councilor Klein. I just wanted a, a clarification of the process that you're talking about to introduce an order that would allow for a temporary change in parking, am I understanding that correctly? So that yes. even if we were to do this according to kind of the conventions that we have in place, which is to refer it to legislative matters, refer it to the TPC, um, it could take two months if it comes back to us. Um, you're talking about, if I understand this correctly, creating an order that, in fact, would allow for the parking to be changed over the holidays. Is that correct? That, and if that so, my ambition, yes. I am not as worried about um, kind of not doing our usual process, if that makes sense. So I guess the only question that we're really grappling with here is whether or not we can, in fact, you can, in fact, put an order, an order forward that would allow for the parking to uh, to be temporarily uh, a two-hour parking space or something along those lines. So that's our only question that we're, we're grappling with to, to meet the needs of the folks who have these 
um, businesses. Is that does that sound correct? Yeah, I think you put your finger on it uh, precisely. And and so the truth, the honest truth, is that I know that we can pass an order to promulgate a temporary traffic regulation, like a stop sign. I would have to think, I would have to look at the text of the law again and think about whether that also means parking rules. Just to be honest, I don't know. I'd say maybe. We should have a law like that. That'd be a fun law for one new member, of, incoming member of the city council to put in, maybe. Uh, but yeah, that would be my hope. So, and I will look at that either way, okay? Councilor uh, Dwight was next. And then after Councilor Dwight, you're welcome to speak again. Uh, to, to your point, I mean, insofar as that we don't know definitively whether that actually can be affected, mm -hmm. it, is, it is cause for concern. We're also coming to the end of a session. Not only the, the at that point, it become, the holiday issue becomes completely moot. If it does end up um, being fully vetted, and I agree, I absolutely agree that, that this should be looked at with uh, the same <coughs> detail, same attention that we do as we, when we change any law. Um, I would like for what, I would like it to be as you say it is or you hope it is. However, if it's not, and the issue of course comes down to enforceability principally, right? Uh, the, the, um, someone could challenge a ticket saying that the, essentially this did not, this was not vetted in the process, and <coughs> the temporary order <coughs> only applies to emergency traffic issues as opposed to parking authority, which we don't know. Um, I don't see that happening. I don't think that's likely. I mean, I, I don't think anyone gets that far into the detail in the weeds. But the fact is that what we're trying to affect here is a a, a prompt response, more prompt than usual, uh, and. Also, by giving it due consideration, which is what we're charged with doing. So my hope is that um, a, a fuller conversation, of course, would occur in legislative matters, which is pretty loaded, just to let you know. There'll be a lot of full conversations in that. But the in some of the issues, that the more granular issues, the consequential issues that were described, how to deal with handicapped parking, which is something always together mm -hmm separately and different, but how to deal with the uh, diminishing of long-term parking by six spaces, by pe uh, which I think was Council Shera's point is you have people who in good faith invested in permits and uh, um, committed to those with the expectation and understanding that these parking spaces would be available to them. So th there's the thrust of our problem, I think, ultimately. So what I would... Uh, I would like to have that conversation in legislative matters. And um, then knowing that in transportation and parking that a fuller conversation will take us into the next year in all likelihood and the new session and also everyone's learning curve and the new committee assignments and everything else. Um, it will be a longer, deeper process. And therein lies my principal concern. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, you, you wanted to speak. We were in Umbridge Street, and then right the next street over is Holloway Street. They could have eight hours or six hours parking there. You know, there's not a lot of traffic. It's right down the street. That could accommodate the eight-hour parking. You know, it's just right down the street. Or even, even on Market Street, where Joe's is, they could put, you know, 10-hour meters there. You know, because there's no really stores there besides Joe's Cafe and whatever. Why can't they do that? Instead of in front of our businesses where we, you know, we need stop and go traffic where people come and they stop and they go and tourists that come, they're not gonna stop if there's no parking. Mm -hmm. And when you've got people parking there all day long, you know, it's it's really frustrating. I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. Councilor Shara. Um, this may be a question for the mayor and maybe you're trying to answer it right now. Um, is this different than when we like suspend parking um, fees so or it would be my opinion that this up. probably wouldn't apply, but the council can pass an order to do anything. I mean, the yeah. council can pass an order so to suspend any regulation it wants. So, I mean, if you have, as our late colleague Ray LaBarge said, if you have six votes, you can, the council can do anything, and meaning that you could just pass an order like we do with the 
you know, with the four days that we suspend parking. So you could certainly do that. Um, I did just want to say that, you know, I did, it was, I obviously greatly respect the council and the process. I obviously respect the Transportation and Parking Commission. I was on it many years as a civilian and, and um, I was, you know, I've had numerous conversations. These folks have been calling our office. They have visited our office. Um, I told them that there's this process. I said I would at least make a good faith effort to bring it forward and explore what the possibility is. I will commit to you that, um, that I will have city staff look at some of these issues. I mean, you bring it to the Parking Commission, but really we know that it's the city staff that will go out and make the determinations about handicap parking and about, mm -hmm. you know, where's the nearest handicap parking spot? Where's the nearest 15 minutes? <coughs> That's all done by city staff. Um, the commission will talk about it, but it's brought to them. So we will expedite that exploration as well <coughs> in terms of where, you know, <coughs> talk with these folks about what they think is necessary. Obviously, people with a handicap placard can park in metered spaces for free. So that's like, that's always an option for someone. Um, and we, so we can do that analysis. I know there's handicap parking a little bit further up at the post office. And then I think under the bridge there is as well, but we can certainly do that analysis to see where it fits in. So we can certainly, I'm committed to giving you all the information you need to make whatever decisions you need. Um, but again, it was not my intent to, um, you know, put you in this situation, but I also have constituents who wanted me to bring it forward. That's so, okay. Yeah. I appreciate you doing that. Um, so look at, um, we've talked a lot about this. We're beginning to repeat ourselves. Um, it, I, with the, with the help of uh, our administrative assistant to city council, uh, I did just look at the ordinance. As I read it now, it, I am of the opinion that we could have an order uh, come to the next council meeting to temporarily change the parking rules in an expeditious fashion. I will consult with the city solicitor about that. <coughs> uh, and it's possible I could still be wrong, but reading it, I think maybe we can. Um, anyway, whether we can or can't is not really the issue. Um, the, the, we have certain conventions in the city council that we cannot suspend just, you know, even with the best of intentions, okay? So I move that we've already referred this to legislative matters. That's settled, okay? Uh, I move that this be referred to the Transportation and Parking Commission as well. So anyone who will second my motion, at least for discussion. No one will second it even for discussion? I'll yes, second, second for discussion. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, why will you not vote for it? <laughs> no, uh, look. Vote, vote your conscience, okay? But, but think about you know, the precedents we're setting, as others have noted, and think about the fact that many different people use this location and have interest in this location, uh, not just one group of people. And think about the fact that we need to have a deliberative process when we make laws as a local city council. And it can be hard, but you know, we can't suspend our rules. Uh, we, we can't be pressured into doing something that is not appropriate. Um, okay, so let's let's do this the way that it should be done, and then the final comment would be, I hope, will be Councilor Nash. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to be clear, that um, we we already have in motion a discussion to create a temporary. This is this is the long-term solution, the, and we're yes. sending this down the the usual long track. That, that is my hope. Okay. That is my hope. Every I will do everything I can to make sure we have an order next uh, next meeting that will that will do that. It's my hope. I I'll double check whether I can. Okay, good. So this is a motion to refer to transportation parking. Any other discussion on the referral? Um, <coughs> only only having made this same um, motion and withdrawn it five minutes ago, <coughs> uh, I'll just say that um, I was under the impression from our discussion here that Councillor Dwight thought this might totally gum up the process by referring, and then I was consoled by the fact that. Transportation and parking can and often does uh, take up matters on their own, and the Jim just told us that they mm -hmm. were planning on doing that. And knowing that <clears throat> not everything that goes to transportation and parking is actually referred from here, from the council, every, every uh, uh, ordinance that comes to us from transportation and parking doesn't get then referred. And so when I made that motion, it was with the understanding that I heard that there's a plan already now to take this matter up in transportation and parking. So it's about whether it's necessary. I don't, 
you know, I'm not sure that by voting against this motion it would be setting some terrible precedent. So uh, um, I think maybe more out of annoyance that we just went through this and then, you know, are doing it again, I'll probably vote not to, not to refer it again. Thanks. Any roll calls? We can roll call this. Uh, there's a request for a roll call. Any this further discussion on the motion to refer? Okay. You're not a bad person if you vote no, that's okay. Oh, no. <laughs> but uh, but it's just my opinion that this commission should take a look at it before we act. Okay. Roll call, please. Councillor Shera. No. Councillor Bidwell. No. Councillor Carmen. No. Councillor Dwight. No. Councillor Fine. No. Councillor Labarge. No. Councillor Murphy. No. Councillor Nash. Yes. And Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Motion fails. Uh, by a substantial margin. Uh, and just a clarification. Yes. Though the motion failed, everyone in the public especially should know that even though we didn't refer it to transportation and parking, we have all been informed that it will be taken up by transportation and parking. Thank you. That's right. And <laughs> now we will go on. Just shoot, shoot. In case you didn't get the message. To the next important issue. Uh, which is a, a 19114 ordinance relative to stop signs on Fulton uh, Avenue. We, we have to vote to refer still to legislative matters, right? We, I believe we did that, did we not? Did we? I'm sorry, well, I was oh, okay. you, you might have voted for it. I got lost in the yes, yeah, yeah. all right. That's right. easy to do. <laughs> so it was a length, long discussion. Uh, 19114, an ordinance relative to stop signs on Fulton Avenue. It's a second reading. Um, motion to approve. Second. It's made and seconded by Councilor Dwight and Councilor Bidwell. Discussion on this. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shea. Yes. Second reading. Next, 19128, an ordinance to amend Chapter 312 of the Code of Ordinances by amending. Section 312-110, which is to delete reference to Union Station parking lot. Approved, please. Motion to approve by Councilor Dwight and seconded by. Second. Councilor Bidwell, any further discussion? Councilor Nash. Yeah, so if you look at this, I, I think that part of the problem in our previous discussion had to do with long-term parking, and I think that what we're seeing here is with this change, which I'm going to vote for, but um, we're seeing the elimination of other long-term spaces. And I think that this has occurred over the last month or so, and that's about the timing that this problem with people parking with permits in front of these businesses started to occur. So that's, again, why I want to have the discussion at the TPC. Noted. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? Ready for a roll call. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Fine. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Yes. Now look at we have a series of ordinances which are uh, in the same part of town. I would uh, move DEF and G as a group. Yes. Second. DEF and G are as follows. 19140, an ordinance relative to parking on Arnold Avenue. 19141 ordinance relative to parking on Belmont Avenue. 19142 ordinance relative to parking on Elm Street. 19143 an ordinance relative to parking on West Street. All these are in second reading. And a motion has been made and second to take them as a group. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Those are approved in second reading. Finally, 19144, an ordinance relative to, to stop sign on Hampton Avenue. Seconded by. Who seconds that? Second. 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 Councillor Shera seconds that. Any discussion on this? Oh. Okay. Uh, roll call. Councillor <coughs> Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Yes. 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 Second reading of business this evening. Move to adjourn, please. Second. Any opposed to adjournment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you.